Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline at Pixie Dust PhD. I am filming this on July 10th, 2024. This is the month 53 creator update. As per usual, we'll go over some news items I thought might be relevant or interesting to you, and then we'll talk about stats, analytics, and revenue for the channel, both this past month and lifetime. Before we get started, a couple of you have reached out to me privately about if I am doing a fundraiser again this year in July. Unfortunately, the answer is no, I just don't really have the bandwidth to do it right now. It is kind of challenging to like, be very peppy and put your best face forward and upload a bunch of extra content to try to drive folks to the channel to try to then have them donate to whatever cause I've picked. So I'm taking a break this year. Part of why I was able to do it last year, honestly, is because I did have a significant period of time off in July. So I did put that time into, you know, making the fundraiser worth it. I do still donate to charitable causes on my own. I'm just not going to make it a big public thing this year. But thank you so much for remembering and thinking of me. That means a lot. Let's get into some news. There was a lot about the Disney Cruise Line in this past monthly period. Most recently, the Oriental Land Company announced a new partnership with Disney that's going to bring Disney Cruise Line to Tokyo in 2028. This reportedly will be a Wish class ship. A lot of folks are very excited because this is the same ownership company as Tokyo Disneyland and people say that that is just like an immaculate theme park. I've never been, but it looks really awesome. And OLC is known for actually putting money into their project, so maybe that is part of why some of it comes out super awesome. Apparently their maintenance is very good. So yes, it is Disney Cruise Line, but my understanding is it'll be primarily run by OLC, so it might feel like a pretty different experience. We also learned about a slew of updates coming to the Disney Dream. There's going to be a funnel suite, a cantina quick service option available, updates to the Oceaneer Club, and a new concierge lounge inspired by Hercules. I'm usually pretty neutral about Disney themed spaces. I don't tend to absolutely love things that they have designed. I don't tend to hate them. I think people put a lot of energy into whether or not they like themed spaces, especially resorts. And good for them. I'm just not really one of those people. But I will say when I saw this concierge lounge artwork, I did laugh. I think it's pretty hilarious. It looks a lot like my PCP's waiting room. And I actually really like that waiting room. It's an enjoyable, comfortable space, but nothing about it screams Hercules. And especially if you drop inspiration by Hercules, you've got to have the columns, right? Like they didn't even do the columns properly. <laughs> this is definitely one instance where I'm pretty team, like what the heck is going on here? They could have just not said it was inspired by Hercules. They could have just said, yeah, we're refreshing the concierge lounge. Like, look at this nice space. It is a nice space. I just like... I see what they were trying to do with the color theme, but that's kind of all they got, in my opinion. And I guess there's like that cloud artwork in the background, but like, no, that's a big miss for me. That's just don't say it's inspired by Hercules then. <laughs> and they gave us some tidbits about the Disney treasure, including that there will be an Aristocats themed lounge, information about the Plaza del Coco restaurant, and there's apparently going to be a Guardians of the Galaxies based show at the new Marvel restaurant. As always, I am not a DCL person. I am definitely not your best source for DCL news, but I know a lot of you enjoy it. I think it's been a fairly common notion in the past, I don't know, four or five years that DCL may be a better alternative than the parks in terms of bang for your buck. I personally think like a cruise vacation and a theme park vacation are not comparable. Like when I go to theme parks, I'm trying to go on rides and sure DCL has characters and entertainment, but like if I'm wanting to go to a theme park and you put me on a cruise, I'm going to be mad. But the bang for your buck argument, you know, price per night, that's pretty hard to argue with. That's true about cruising in general. It's actually, well, it can be fairly economical. You can also spend a ridiculous amount of money on a cruise, like in those suites. But anyway, if you are a DCL fan, let me know what you are looking forward to the most, or let me know what piece of DCL news I absolutely missed that you think I should know about that you're really excited for. I've got just one bit of Disneyland news I wanted to touch on, which is that Oogie Boogie Bash is already totally sold out. I think there were 27 event dates. It was most Sundays... Tuesdays and Thursdays in September and October, and then like the last week of August. And they were only on sale to the general public for nine or 10 days, I want to say, before like all the tickets are gone. I've never been to an after hours event or a party at Disneyland. I've hardly ever even been to Disneyland. I've been once as an adult. So it's really interesting to see this compared to something like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, which takes a while to sell out usually. And apparently demand last year was probably even higher. I didn't go and look up the stats, but that seemed to be what the chatter indicated. If you've ever attended Oogie Boogie Bash or even just looked into it thoroughly, let me know in the comments down below why this is such like a prime event. It definitely seems neat to me and maybe it's that special extra factor of villains. I think they tend to have way more villains out and about doing really cool stuff, but like dang that sold out so fast. Moving over to Walt Disney World then in Magic Kingdom, of course the revamped Country Bear Jamboree is set to open on July 17th. There's been some previews floating around. Again, I try to stay relatively spoiler free so I haven't really seen much of anything, but Folks say it's looking pretty cute, so that's exciting. 
The Eat to the Beat schedule has been announced at Epcot. This runs from like late August through mid November. Hearing the musical performances is absolutely included in your day ticket. You don't have to do anything special per se, but there are dining packages available if you want to bundle like a meal with being able to go get a first dib seat essentially at Eat to the Beat. You can also line up in the standby queue if you still want to go ahead and enter the venue, the arena, I guess, uh, to sit. You don't necessarily have to do a dining package, but those lines can get quite long. But if you haven't been, it is an open air situation, so you can just kind of walk by and hang out and still hear everything. You don't necessarily have to be in the venue. New this year, though, Yellow Card is performing, which is fun for all of my scene kid friends. And Disney recently celebrated halfway to the holidays, so we learned a bit about holiday time coming to Disney World. Jollywood Nights is returning to Hollywood Studios on select nights from November 9th through December 21st. There are some new characters slated this year, as well as returning characters, of course, and there's going to be a skating spectacular. Last year, this didn't have the best start. It was a little bit rocky from an events management perspective, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes year two. Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party is, of course, returning to Magic Kingdom this year. There is new merch, though. That runs on select nights from November 8th through December 20th. And Epcot's International Festival of the Holidays is making a return. This one is short. You will only have from November 29th through December 30th to enjoy. We didn't hear much about holiday happenings at Animal Kingdom other than the Merry Menagerie is returning, so those adorable little puppets. And over at Disney Springs, you will still have the Christmas tree stroll. Plus, Santa is going to make appearances at all parks plus Disney Springs. It's July. It is hotter than hot outside. I am not in holiday spirits in the slightest, but I do appreciate that they release information relatively far in advance to help with your vacation planning. And the biggest news story of this past month was probably the Genie Plus revisions. So we are now moving from Genie Plus to Lightning Lane Passes. There's multi-pass and single pass. I did a whole separate video covering that if you want to learn more about that. Long story short is in Disneyland, there's basically absolutely no change. It's a branding change, but your day-to-day -day operations of using multi-pass and single pass will be what you're used to for Genie Plus and individual Lightning Lanes. At Walt Disney World, there are some meaningful changes. If you remember the Fast Pass Plus system, it's pretty similar to that, but paid. With the purchase of MultiPass, you will be able to make advanced attraction selections prior to your arrival, plus you will get to pick your return window time, which is nice. So again, it's very similar to Fast Pass Plus, but it's paid, and also there still are no rewrites. It's one MultiPass Lightning Lane per ride per day. And finally, I really have no meaningful Disney Vacation Club news to report. Interestingly, though, it is July and we haven't learned anything more about Island Tower at Polynesian Villas and Bungalows. That's set to open in basically mid-December, so we're about five months out now. I know I am certainly not the only one who is curious or anxious to learn more, like maybe a points chart would be nice. <laughs> when do you think the next information drop for Island Tower at PVV will be? Remember, I'm filming this on July 10th. This probably won't get posted till July 13th or 14th, so <laughs> if something's happened in the past few days, <laughs> sorry. Also, when do you think these will go on sale? I really have no inside scoop or even like an educated guess. I think a guess is a guess at this point, but I really thought these might be going on sale like end of July or August. So if that's true, I mean, they still would have time to tell us more information. They got a couple weeks, but yeah, I'm getting antsy. I'm still not planning on buying in. I'm just nosy. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. And as always, if there was other theme park news or just news you think that I would want to chat with you about, leave that in the comments down below. Always happy to have that dialogue. Let's move into stats and analytics. For month 53, I pulled these from July 11th through June 9th, so we are one day short of the full monthly period, but it's close enough. I've got some weekend travel coming up, so I need to do this now. I can't delay another day. <laughs> this past monthly period, we posted six or seven actual videos and no shorts. Most of these were vlogs from the October 2023 trip, but then of course we did have the Lightning Lane multi-pass and single pass explanation video, as well as a Disney Vacation Club availability video. If you have requests for a time frame for a DVC availability video, leave those in the comments down below. And please do specify, like, if you mean that day seven months in advance or if you mean that day some other time in advance. I can't promise I'll make it. These really revolve around my schedule and the demands on my time at work. But I would like to know what time frames you're interested in seeing at the very least. Top content this month by views was dominated by Disney Vacation Club videos as well as room tours. I'm obviously highly biased, but I definitely put a lot of time into trying to distill the Lightning Lane multi-pass and single pass information into a logical flow that makes sense. So I'm a little bit sad to see that video not do better, honestly, especially considering I've seen a lot of misinformation float around about that already. It's kind of ridiculous how much folks don't actually just go to the Disney website and read what they have posted. So if you haven't checked that out yet, I would super appreciate it if you would. And if you're in groups where folks are talking about these changes and have questions, maybe drop a link to my video. That would be awesome. 
And only three of these were posted this month, so that DVC availability video, the lightning lane changes, and then last month's monthly crater update. It's funny to see some of the older DVC availability videos still get traction. To me, in my mind, the availability videos are not that pertinent maybe a few weeks after they're posted just because time has moved on, and so availability obviously looks very different. But people must be referencing them afterward for maybe they're planning next year? I'm not too sure, but it is nice and surprising to see those hang around. In month 53, we got 8,150 views from just under 5,200 unique viewers. Almost 1,100 of those viewers were returning. Again, thank you so much for coming back. It means a lot to me. And big ups to Judy, who supports me over on Ko-fi. I know I say this every month, but I really do appreciate every time you guys interact with the channel, whether that's liking the video, subscribing to the channel, ringing the bell to turn on notifications, leaving comments down below, sharing videos with friends, coming over to my Ko-fi, all that stuff is super appreciated. I, it's honestly very humbling. This past month, we received just over 600 total watch hours and just under 120,000 impressions with 41% of those impressions coming from YouTube. And we got 44 new subscribers in the month. For lifetime analytics, we are now over 330,000 views. This is about 21,500 watch hours. The channel has just over 3.5 million impressions with 39.8% of those impressions coming from YouTube. And overall, we are now at 1,803 subscribers. Last month on the channel was a monster month, so I knew coming into this comparison that this month would look very, very bad comparatively. <laughs> and that being said, most of these stats I'm still pretty happy about. Over 8,000 views, over 600 watch hours, and still six figures impressions? Yeah, that's a good month for me. I'm a little bummed about the percent impressions from YouTube being down at 41%. I typically strive for this to be about 45% or higher, but not every month is going to be killer. That being said, even with that being a bit disappointing, I did still get 44 new subscribers this month, which again is a lot less than last month, but is a very, very good month for me overall. And lifetime stats were chugging along. We're at over 21,000 watch hours now and 3.5 million impressions, plus we did break the 1,800 subscriber mark. For revenue, this past month I made about $70. This is a little under $9 for every thousand views overall, or a little over $24 for every thousand ad views. And in this past monthly period, the most recent DVC availability video did bring in the most revenue. Lifetime, I'm now at about $1,073 total. That's about three and a quarter dollars for every thousand views and a little over $19 for every thousand ad views. And here's a look at the past six months of revenue. May and June were definitely really strong. I'm not expecting July to turn out that way. For probable upcoming content for now, it's just a bunch of October 2023 trip vlogs. We'll see what else happens. Maybe I can sneak an availability video in there. Maybe they'll drop some DVC news. <laughs> I would appreciate it. Disney Vacation Club, Overlords, if you gave me some easy content to report on. Also, I just want to know. It's, it's less about the channel and it's more about me wanting to know things at this point. It is my birthday month, so we're taking a long weekend away, so that is putting me a little bit behind on the channel, but I do think I'll be able to deliver at least one video a week. We'll see about more. And if you want to check out my other channel, Trying to Have a Life, I certainly have not posted as much of our Norway vacation as I would have liked to, but I did post a room tour of the mini suite that we had on our princess cruise. So if you like room tours, maybe you'll like that one too. Last month was my partner's birthday, so we had a great time celebrating that. And my birthday is coming up, so summertime's always super fun, just a season full of love. I do wish it was less hot outside, though. I'm tired of breaking records. This is not fun. I don't have central air conditioning I could do without this. I hope you're staying cool or whatever your preferred safe temperature is. And if you have any fun summer plans, let me know in the comments down below. I always love hearing about your experiences. We were obviously in Norway for a bit, so that was kind of our big trip for the year. So not a ton coming up. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. May the rest of your day be magical, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD. Hey y'all, it's Jacqueline at Pixie Dust PhD. I'm filming this on July 10th, 2024. This is the month 34 creator update. 34.